Hi everyone, welcome to the latest Bison video blog, along with Jeff Kolpak, I'm Dom Izzo. We've come to the end of the regular season. It's hard to believe we're already here. The Bison Jeff coming off their first loss of the regular season, 27-24 defeat to Youngstown State. The blog was filled both on Saturday and yesterday with comments, the Bison fans freaking out, but I think <laughs> there probably has to be some perspective made here that just a couple years ago this team was 3-8. Was and eight. Oh, you're still uh, nine and one Bison fans. <laughs> I wouldn't get too worked up. Uh, you know, the, the Missouri. This is not '86 and, and 1990 when those Division II teams, Dom, yeah. had to get up maybe four or five times at most during the regular season. No real morning side in this group of teams. Even Western Illinois this uh, this coming weekend. I mean, they, they beat the Bison last yep. year. Under uh, granted, they had a different look on offense, but uh, it, it, I didn't think this team would get through even at midseason going unbeaten that's why I picked them to lose prior two weeks maybe I was a little weaker a uh, week early on that <laughs> uh, prediction but it just it's just so tough to, to do it doesn't happen Craig Bowl said on Monday in his press conference here that he's probably going to get the coaching staff the seniors get in the face of this young team there's not going to be any rose-colored glasses that there was some definite uh, I wouldn't say lack of effort but I would say lack of uh, intensity in the game on Saturday, and it showed because Youngstown State came ready to play and got the win. Again, I go back to that same comment. You're not going to have that every week. It's just uh, uh, your 18, 19, 20-year-old kids that uh, you know, they, they see themselves being ranked number one, right. and maybe there's just a natural letdown. I don't know, but uh, I would imagine that, uh, as the late great Al McGuire once said, he didn't mind <laughs> losing right before the tournament because it got his players' his attention back. Preston Evans said it to us after the game. Maybe some humble pie was eaten there because they had to have seen the television reports, read their press clippings. They've been number one ranked for a little bit that maybe that was the best thing for him. I'll ask you that. Best thing for him as we uh, head into the stretch run now. Well, he's a senior and he would know. I think Preston's got a real nice perspective on things. I don't want to say it's good for you, but it certainly doesn't hurt. And if there was a lack of attention to detail, like uh, the coach said in the yeah. press conference today, if there was a lack of focus and that got brought up today, then, yeah, this probably was uh, not a bad thing. Still plenty to play for this week, though, going into the regular season finale in Macomb. Still a chance of the conference title. If the Bison win, they'll share it with Northern Iowa. If the Panthers win on the road at Illinois State, if the Panthers lose, the Bison win the conference outright. They'll still have the auto bid, Jeff, because they won head-to-head -head against UNI. Now let's talk about if they are able to get the win against Western Illinois, who comes into this game 2-8. and eight. They're only averaging 9.5 points a game. Their highlight win was against Southern Illinois, which we've seen the Salukis have only won three games all year. It's really went south for the Leathernecks after that. Yeah, and 9.5 points in the last, I believe, four games. They're just having trouble scoring. Matt Barr isn't there anymore, no. and they have not replaced that quarterback. How Badly do they need this buy? If the Bison win, I'm of the firm belief, I believe you are as well, 10-1, mm -hmm. and one, they'll be the Missouri Valley champs. They'll get the buy into the second round. Right now, they're an injured group. Yeah, and it's a lot of minor injuries that perhaps when you're sitting in row KK at the Fargo Dome, <laughs> it's hard to pick up. But, you know, Colton Heal's thumb, for instance, yep. makes it hard to wrap up. And, uh, you know, Ryan Drevel is out two, three weeks. And, you know, there's, th there's a handful of guys that could use a week off. Brock Jensen will not be any better than what you guys saw if you were at the game or watching the game on TV on Saturday. That is what Craig Bowl told us today. Impact of that statement going forward. He's just going to have to deal with it. You know, I, he's just going to have to uh, figure out a way to uh, get his accuracy back. Again, he wasn't horrible by no. any means, but uh, he was 11 to 22, and he's still 70% for the year. But he made some throws that we haven't seen all year. The latest bracketology had the Bison at three. They'll get a bye out of the first round and then play the winner of Illinois State and New Hampshire. If the Bison win and couple that with a Montana State loss against Montana, the Brawl of the Wild game is this weekend in Bozeman, which always is a classic game. But let's say Montana State loses that game. you probably see the Bison move up to two unless... Georgia Southern somehow beats Alabama in Tuscaloosa this Saturday. Well, you look at the uh, the whole package and your whole season, and NDSU would finish 10-1 and with a win over Minnesota, the Big Ten, which uh, that Iowa win, I don't think we should discount no. that. The Gophers beating Iowa probably uh, helped that regard in, in an FBS win. So uh, Youngstown's a good team. You know, they, they have a good program. They're, gonna, they're fighting for a playoff spot themselves. I don't think it was such a, such a bad loss. Before we leave football, gut feeling before we talk to the bracketology the next time we do our video blog, how many teams from the Missouri Valley get in? We know two are definite right now. How many get in on Sunday? I'll say three. I'll say three. I'll say uh, NDSU, Northern Iowa, and then from there <laughs> we could. We have Illinois you know, State, State, Youngstown State, Indiana State are in the conversation. One of those three. Well, Illinois State's going to have to beat Northern Iowa. 
and it's not out of the realm of possibilities, so. <laughs> it's a home game in normal yeah. as well for the yeah. Redbirds. I'm going to say on the record, Indiana State. They have a FBS win True. over Western Kentucky. Granted, Youngstown has a win over the top-ranked team in the nation, but I like Indiana State uh, to get that win. We'll find out, though, when the full bracket comes out uh, on Sunday. Let's switch gears to men's basketball. Saul Phillips' team, we talked last week, you know, down in the dumps after the loss to MSU Moore at Division II, they go out and sweep in San Francisco, Jeff. Lawrence Alexander, uh, Taylor Braun, Mike Fell on the all-tournament team. Braun, the MVP of the tournament, as they go 3-0. and oh. I think what you found is a team who went out there and found their roles. Because in a good team, you need five starters, that's yep. true. But you need guys coming off the bench, happy to do so and making a, 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 a contribution. And I think that's what you saw that weekend. Lawrence Alexander, his first game, gets 13 points. Eight rebounds, seven assists in his first college game. He almost had a triple double his first time out. Outstanding. And uh, the head coach was um, in my in, in our conversation yesterday. I had with him just said he couldn't say enough about him. Yeah. And and people asked him, is he really a freshman? Yeah, he's really a freshman. Taylor Braun looks like he's going to be the unquestioned leader on this team. At 26 in the opener against San Francisco, has really stepped into that leadership role that the Bison need with only two seniors and one being out for a now, month. Now, who did that story before <laughs> they went out to Taylor Braun? Refresh my memory. <laughs> that would be Mr. Colfax sitting next to me. Also, we want to give some attention to the Bison volleyball team. The Summit League volleyball tournament begins on Friday. NDSU is the top seed going for a third tournament title in the last four years, Jeff. They'll get Oakland on Friday afternoon and then the possibility of an IPFW rematch in the championship. Who beat NDSU in the tournament two years ago? Bison are on a roll. They won eight in a row. Last loss was to Northern Iowa, which is nationally ranked at Northern Iowa. A game and a match that the Bison almost won. Won. Went, down, went down to five sets. You have a senior setter, you have veteran inside, outside. I think you have a defense that's probably uh, finding its game. Uh, NDSU's on a roll. You think that the favorites heading out there, even though IPFW, if they beat Oral Roberts, will play them in the championship match if the Bison get through Oakland? I do, and when IPFW won here two years ago, there was a lot of pressure on the home team. No doubt. I, I, and I think Kerry Thompson alluded to that, that they're feeling pretty good about themselves. Experience of having Jennifer Lopez and Chrissy Knuth doing this again for the fourth time. How much can that help for them going out there? Oh, it certainly can't hurt, can it? I mean, uh, having that point guard as a setter or the quarterback, you know, that same position, to have a senior like that is just incredible. Big week for Bison Athletics. We mentioned volleyball. The Bison men have their home opener coming up on Wednesday against Green Bay. That'll be fun. And then Jeff and I will be heading to Macomb for the regular season finale for the Bison football team as they take on Western Illinois. This is the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog.